My mom was uh, was diagnosed with cancer uh, many years ago, and um, she she ignored it because I had a little brother who also had cancer, and she was preoccupied with taking care of him. So she was having signs that something was wrong, but because he was so ill, he had brain cancer, she really ignored her own signs. And um, <clears throat> I would go up there to help mom and Charlie when they needed it. Mom really never asked for help, but when she did, she really needed it. <clears throat> anyway, mom got really sick at one point. She needed surgery, and the doctors told us that it would be outpatient. So I took a week off work to go take care of her, or take care of Charlie while she was in the hospital. Anyway, her outpatient surgery turned out to be a really serious surgery, and she I was up there for over five weeks. Now things were going okay for a couple of years, and then mom one day said to me, I need to see a doctor. I knew that was not a good thing. Uh, I first met um, Mary and her brother Peter when they came to talk to me about the care that their mother was receiving. Um, she had been ill and off and on uh, in and out of the hospital and they weren't sure how to evaluate whether the care that she was getting was appropriate uh, and, and what they could do to make sure that she got the best care, that she got the best care possible. Unfortunately, the day that I was scheduled to go and meet her at the hospital, she died. Um, and we then turned our attention to uh, assessing and arranging her estate administration and also the care of Mary's brother Charlie, who had been living with his mother uh, his whole life. And she had never pursued any action to have him found disabled or to secure any benefits. Um, or to become appointed as guardian or, or anything of that sort. They simply lived together, mother and son, and she took care of him and never had any difficulties doing that. After she passed away, uh, Charlie could not live by himself and came to live with Mary. And she was not going to have the same kind of ease in being able to talk to his doctors and being able to manage his finances that his mother had had. So we then proceeded with a guardianship uh, petition to have Mary and her brother Peter appointed co-guardians of Charlie. We tried to arrange for a consultation with a geriatric care manager. Charlie had never received any services or been officially assessed in any way for services. And it, it seemed that that might provide a good avenue to determine whether there were things that would be helpful to Mary in managing his care and taking care of him at home helpful to him in maximizing his quality of life. He had um, some disabilities, but also some very strong interests, things he loved to do. Music, I recall, was, was a real love of his, uh, to encourage that and develop it as much as possible. And she came in, and she was tremendous. She helped us out. You know, she gave me guidance. I mean, that's what I needed. I needed guidance. I needed to know that when I couldn't be there, somebody else could be there, and especially for Charlie, who couldn't speak. Um, Mom's will didn't get probated because of some legal issues with having the witnesses come prove the signing of the will back in the 70s, I think it was. Um, so we were going forward in uh, Loudoun County, and we kept finding more assets. Um, it was a, a real search and find to figure out all that her mom had and uh, it kept coming in. <laughs> we think we finally got it all and then she would, Mary would come in with another set of bonds or something else that, that uh, we hadn't known about before. And then when we found all the little pieces we had to corral all the little pieces and put them into the estate. Basically what I did with um, Liz was, I, I want to say I threw every, everything I thought I needed to give her and what she asked me for in a box and said, here you go, and, and pretty much passed the buck because I couldn't do it. There was no way. Well, the first thing that Mary's mom could have done is uh, put assets in what's called a special needs trust for Charlie. 
um, that would have been wonderful because we had to go through the guardianship process and get the court to allow us to establish a trust. Because we did it that way, it was a payback trust, which means Medicaid gets paid back at his death. It would have been nice if she had updated her will, had incapacity documents for herself, because the other problem when she went into the hospital is that nobody had the authority to make decisions for her at a time when it was an emergency. So you need to let your family members know where your original will is, um, where your incapacity documents are, where your assets are. Um, if you've got little pieces like that, in, in Mary's situation, it would have been nice if her mother had done a trust and put all the little pieces into the trust that would have avoided a probate and everything would be in the same place. It would make disbursement very easy. We had a great Christmas. Uh, all the kids were there. Um, it was really nice. Uh, two days after Christmas, I came downstairs. It was December 28th. I came downstairs and um, I saw Charlie lying in his bed, but half his body was off of, off of the bed, like his legs, almost like he was trying to get up. Couldn't speak, um, and I knew something was wrong, so I called 911. With, uh, I, I spoke with uh, several people, and I agreed the best thing for Charlie was to bring him home with hospice, and that was how Charlie's story went. Hmm. And I brought him home, you know, there's a lot of action in the back of the ambulance and rocking and jerking him around and he opened his eyes when he came into the house and he looked at me and he smiled like I'm home. And, um, it was, uh, my, Peter flew in, my sister-in-law who is amazing, Nicole came and she helped me um, take care of Charlie those last couple of weeks and um, you know we were all there if I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't change a thing. You do, you do what you have to do because it's your family. Yeah. I, it was a promise that I made, um, and I would never have done it any differently because um, he needed me, and I know that if the tables were turned, he would do the same thing. And it was a promise I made to my mom that unless there was a something really severe that happened, something outrageous that I couldn't predict that would happen. There was no way my brother, my older brother and I would put Charlie in a nursing home and we did what we had to do.